I am going to introduce you to our teacher for this session, Bo. So Bo is a marketing and brand expert. He got his start in the music industry, was signed at a very young age, and has helped some music icons like, is it Little Pump? <laughs> Little Pump, <laughs> go big. Um, yeah. He was a professor at New York University and also has really helped transform YouTube channels, which is going to be a particular interest for us in this session. So this session is all about keyword analysis and research. So Bo, I'll let you take it away. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, happy to be back. So today we are learning what in my opinion is, is one of the most useful skills if you have an online business or any business period. Because nowadays, if you have any business, there's, there's an online component. So I'm going to keep it really simple because keyword research and, and these concepts, they, uh, if you don't know about marketing and the technical stuff, it intimidates a lot of people, but it's one of the simplest things you can do and also one of the most effective things you can do. And essentially, what keyword research is, is the following. It's finding a way to quantify what people are searching for. And you can do, the, the beauty of it is you can do it on a per platform basis. So using keyword research uh, and the tools I'm about to show you, you can see how many people are searching for things on uh, Google, on YouTube, on Instagram. And not only does it um, show you what people are searching for, it shows you how many times people are searching for certain terms and in what format they want the information, right? So. For example, in, in my uh, other business, CoSpace, where we rent to psychologists like Lisa, for example, in the psychology space, if you're, for example, a PTSD expert, you can you know, put PTSD on your website and so forth, but people who may need PTSD counseling may not necessarily be Googling uh, PTSD. What types of things would they be Googling for potentially? Uh, depression, anxiety. So if you're a, B, a PTSD expert, even though that's your specialty, you may be better off positioning yourself as an anxiety or depression expert, knowing that every, on a given month, there's maybe a million people searching for anxiety and depression, and there's only like 50,000 people searching for PTSD. So what I'm about to teach you is how exactly to quantify your audience. And when you, when you use the right tools, it unlocks a lot of possibilities in essentially creating a system that will put all of your content on autopilot. So we're gonna talk about two things really. We're gonna talk about in these five videos that you're making, how do you maximize their reach? How do you maximize their impact? And it really comes down to titling it the right, right way, right? You could have two, two videos that are exactly the same videos with two different titles. One will have 500 views and the other one will have 50,000 views simply because they're titled differently. So we're going to learn about uh, how to title videos. And there's two strategies. So there's what's called a long tail strategy with keyword research and short tail. So for example, the term anxiety itself will have a lot of searches obviously in the millions, but a longer tail keyword such as what um, did my childhood trauma cause me anxiety, that longer tail keyword because it's more specific may have a lot less monthly searches. However, what, you know, what should you, as somebody who's starting out, be targeting? Should you be targeting the really vague keywords or should you be targeting the specific stuff? What do you think, just out of curiosity? Unmute them, I'm the curious. Drill the drill down one. I think- Do we want to target the keywords? Do we want to target the keywords that have tons of volume, like millions of searches, or do we want to target the really specific ones that don't have specific searches. Specific ones. No, millions. Do both. You want to do both. So for example, when you blueprint your website, <laughs> yeah, it's a trick question. When you, when you do your blueprinting for your website, obviously you want your website menu items. And I talked a lot about this in, in your feedback. You want the menu items on your website to be what people are searching for, right? So, uh, so things like that, the bigger picture macro stuff, you want to use the more general keyword. But when it comes to things like YouTube videos, when it comes to things like blog posts, et cetera, you want to be uh, capitalizing on the long tail strategy. And if we look at where the, uh, this, this thing called the search demand curve, this is as technical as today's going to get. But as you can see, 
over 70% of overall searches are long tail strategies. It's just annoying to do because you have to write a lot of specific articles to, you know, to capture the same o overall amount as like, let's say, uh, you know, the term anxiety versus how to treat anxiety, how to treat anxiety is going to have a lot less searches, but you know that if somebody's actually searching how to treat anxiety and you have a video on YouTube that says how to treat anxiety, five simple steps. Well, obviously a good percentage of those people will probably click through to the video and you're going to get much uh, better quality leads and traffic going to your site, the more specifically you can answer their questions. So I'm going to switch gears now into the tool that I use uh, for all of this. There's a tool, it's a paid tool. I can uh, help you guys out a little bit with this, but it's something I, it's, it's worth every penny. I use this for all of my businesses. And this is the simple step that if you take, will already set you apart from 90% of content creators, just because people hear keyword research, they, uh, you know, their, their head explodes and they think it's this complicated thing. So what I've done is I uh, sort of pre-searched a few different keywords based on what you guys have sent me. And I'm a, you know, I think the best way to learn is by doing. So with these types of things, I could give you a 50 page presentation. And after you're probably still gonna be like, all right, how the hell does this actually work? How do I do it? Or I can just show you some examples of how I would go about doing keywords for different niches. And through this, what's interesting, you're going to see that a lot of the times the assumptions you make about what people are actually searching for are, 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 are you know, not necessarily the case. So the first thing I'm going to do is give you a little tour of this platform that I use to do keyword research on and just show you uh, everything that it's capable of. So the first thing is you can search by region. So if you have a local business, you can see locally what are people searching for. Or if you have like an online business or a national level sort of uh, entity, you just want to you know, search nationally and, and actually search, uh, look at all the searches worldwide. You can select platforms. So the things that people search on Google and YouTube um, and eBay and Instagram, they're all slightly different, right? So for example, if you guys are now creating these videos and your main objective is, you know, I'm going to embed these videos on my website, but their primary home is going to be, you know, Hello World TV and I want them on YouTube. So if you know that YouTube with this big built-in audience uh, is where your videos will reside, you want it, you want to search uh, YouTube and see what people are looking for on YouTube. Now let's, let's just start with an example. So I typed in psychologist, right? So when I type in psychologist, what, what this is doing now, it's looking at, and it takes a couple seconds, but it's, it's looking at all the data worldwide, all the searches of people who are searching for a psychologist. And what we can do here is we can see all the monthly searches, but after a while, if, if we're only looking for terms with psychologist in it, this becomes a bit redundant after a while. So where the, the true power, where you try to start to see the true power of this is you can now with this tool, if you're, if you're a psychologist and you wanna see what are all the other words that people are searching for that's you know not psychology, but in that niche and how much volume is there, let's see. And can you guys see this? I have a really big monitor. So I see you all kind of squinting. Can I, yeah. Should I zoom in a little bit? When no, I, I see depression, stuff? anxiety, psychiatrist, counseling, therapist. Yeah. So if, we, if I'm a psychologist, so if I'm Lisa, and I know we have, uh, I forget who's the um, physical, so we have another psychologist slash physical therapist here. So for example, if you guys are creating your website, you're trying to figure out what content to put out on YouTube and even on your website, you know, first you'll search psychologist. And okay, there's a one and a half million people searching psychologist, but that's not really specific enough, right? So if we look at the related keywords, there's 1.8 million people a month searching for depression, one and a half million people a month searching for anxiety, right? So if I'm a psychologist, I'm not even going to really position my website and my content as I'm a psychologist. It's going to be like, I can help you cure and help you with your depression. I can help you with your anxiety. These little subtleties, right? When you, when you start looking at keywords, you go from casting a net this large for potential leads to you know, this large, just with subtle tweaks. And not only that, we can also look at the trends, right? This is where a lot of the power of this tool uh, becomes obvious. You can see what's trending when it comes to psychology searches. So this is a good way to get ahead of the curve. And what you need to do is you need to ignore the, the searches with lower volume. So right here, this is trending up 600%. 
but there's only 30, you know, 30 searches a month. So anything with under like 100, 200 searches a month, I tend to ignore. But as you can see, online psychotherapy has surged 240% in the last month. So if I'm a psychologist and I don't have, and look at this, online therapy surged 173,000% with 74,000 searches. Uh, online psychologist, 174%. So now if I'm Lisa, for example, and I, and I uh, already have some credibility as a therapist, I wanna create a new page on my website and you know, create a, an online therapy section because now just by doing that, 74,000 people a month who are searching Google for online therapy, guess what? Now my site and titles are indexing. So that's very important. Question, who has an FAQ on their website? Anybody? Who has an FAQ? Okay, so we have, we have uh, Lillian with the HPV website. So I actually have this loaded up. So one of the really cool things about this, so I searched HPV and I looked at what are, you know, let's look at the total volume for HPV searches. So there's 1.5 million people searching HPV in general. There's quarter million a month searching for vaccine. So you should have a, you know, this is where a lot of your volume is going to be. So on your website, in your headline, you know, I was talking about your headlines, um, a mission of, of uh, I don't know if there is a vaccine or not. I'm, I'm a little uneducated on the subject, but if there is, spreading a, uh, spreading the knowledge of HPV vaccine around the world, our mission, right? So like your mission statement is now what quarter million people in the world are searching every month. You're going to get a lot of organic searches. But back to my point, if you have an FAQ, this is a really cool feature as well. You can, you can set this tool to analyze what questions are people asking about HPV. So this feature right here, when it comes to YouTube videos and your FAQs is a gold mine, because if you're ever asking yourself, all right, like I'm a, I'm a, I have this HPV website, what kind of videos should I create for YouTube? Well, guess what? We just search what questions people are asking for, and these are literally going to be parts of your YouTube video titles. Uh, titles. So is HPV an STD? Question mark, right? Um, you said that it can spread skin to skin, skin to skin, so it's not. So this right here, is a video, and because there's only 12,000 searches a month, it's not as competitive as a more broad term. So if you have good content and you're targeting these longer tail keywords in a really sniper focused way, you're almost guaranteed to get a percentage of these views. And it becomes a snowball effect because on YouTube, when you create, you know, how do you unlock, how do you get that exponential growth on a YouTube channel? a lot of videos that have what people are searching for. That's what we built Gravity Transformation. If you weren't here last class, type in Gravity Transformation on YouTube. We built them up to 2.4 million uh, subscribers. How do we do that? Slow and steady, but every title of a video on that channel is done via keyword research. And then what happens if you have a channel full of that stuff? They watch one video, boom, suggested videos, then the next one comes up. And you just need to get people to your first video. And then there's this trickle down effect where if you have content and videos based on keyword research, based on what people are searching for, it becomes this exponential effect and it eventually snowballs um, in the algorithm. And that's when you just get that, that pop. So one other thing just to uh, help you out a little bit with your keyword research around HPV, if we look at trends, this is very interesting. So what is trending uh, in terms of searches? I noticed there's a lot of people searching for HPV on your hand, right? It's trending 300% in the last month. I don't know if that's related to COVID. Maybe sometimes like something will be in the news and then a lot of people start searching for it. But right now, I don't see, you know, there's probably not a lot of content about HPV warts on hands. So the fact that you have this right here with um, 10,000 searches, 10, so right here alone, hand warts, 20,000 searches a month, if you create a, a video or a blog post about that, you can see how strategically picking your spots uh, will help you. Any questions? I'm gonna stop for, for a, a couple minutes and let's uh, open it up to questions. Deborah, you can moderate the mics and stuff. Did you, did you tell us the name of this particular? It's, it's yeah, I actually put it into the notes there. So it's uh, keywordtool.io. Um. Bo, can I ask you something where um, you went to look 
Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah you're, cutting, okay. you're cutting out a little bit, I think. When you went to the trend, uh, you uh, for, the, for the warts on the hand or the HPV on the hands, what about the one, the trend where it says it's 650% on the right for bumps on the back of the tongue? Would it we? You would do both. These are all opportunities. The reason I kind of keyed in on that is because even though the percentage growth is, is higher with the back of the tongue, the overall volume here is, is you know, much more significant. And so it's 20,000 versus 400. So what I usually like, it's, it's a balancing act because, you know, there are certain keywords, like if you start ranking for HPV, that's a gold mine because you're going to have a million and a half searches all seeing your stuff. But keywords that have a lot of volume are also much more competitive because you've had websites that have been online for 10 years ranking for HPV, giving people good value content. So the, the short tail keywords, that's like a couple year battle to get your website. You know, if someone types in HPV, then over time, um, that, that, that's a lot harder to do than a short, sorry, a long tail strategy about, you know, like a HPV bump, bumps on the back of your tongue. That would be relatively easy to rank for if you're like first to the draw, because there's still not that many searches, but they're, they're exploding. So, you know, I would just do both and create a blog post for both because it's like building real estate. Once you do it and you do it the right way, it'll always generate leads and traffic. And that's what people don't realize, you know, it's better to really take the time and to blueprint this stuff out and to be very methodical about the content you create because you could create the best piece of content in the world, but if nobody's searching for it, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. And, and it's, it's that simple. And people just ignore this step for whatever reason. And you see how easy it is. So uh, any other questions? I'm just going to keep going down um, a lot of your specific examples that apply to you guys. And then uh, I can, I'll can i take suggestions and, and uh, after I go through them all. Anybody oh, else have a question? I have a question. Yeah. Can you Good. use some of these in one blog? So you put multiple titles into one article and that way you're getting the traffic from all those flows or do you want to? You can, it's, it's a, there's an art to it. So you don't want to, it's called what you're there. There's something called keyword stuffing. So back in like the nineties and two thousands, what people would do is you would have like a white background and then there would be like white text at the bottom and they would just add like 10,000 keywords. And that would like work because Google wasn't at a, as advanced. Nowadays, the algorithm and, and like, they know everything. They literally know everything. So you have to make sure it's better. You, you want to make sure that your headline and the content are you know congruent that they they, they are consistent um, and but the more keywords you have without keyword stuffing yes the better and there's a sweet spot you know if you want to have um, if you're going to do blog posts you know I would say 800 sorry a thousand to two thousand words are usually the most rewarded don't quote me that exactly uh, but now it's starting to happen with video you know that's why video is such a big opportunity is you know youtube is owned by google so now every time you make a video and embed it into your website uh youtube automatically transcribes what you're saying and it indexes those keywords and if you embed it in your website the google algorithm correlates everything so the more videos you make you're actually also uh, you know you're also ranking for these keywords on your web searches so that's that's going to be you know all the stuff we're talking about with keyword research for like website copy and stuff that it's the same thing for video because they're transcribing your words into text. And that's, you know, when, that's how when people search videos on Google, some of the search results are based off of that data and it'll continue to, you know, in the next 10 years, that's where all that's headed. So keyword research I is almost so yeah, what I, would, I would just add on really quickly too that, you know, when you're thinking, when you start to do the keyword analysis and you're looking at the titles, obviously choosing a topic like HPV and hand warts, that's not going to be a 22 minute episodic episode. That's going to be a one to four minute video that's slated specifically for a platform like YouTube because you, you can't fill 22 minutes of interviews and having conversations about warts on your hand, but it's a hot topic right now. So literally you could film a short, you know, interview or some sort of, um, you know, you talking to camera about you know, sh showing some visuals on, you know, what, what is HPV on the hand, what's not HPV on the hand, and nail it like in three minutes. 
Yeah, and th you know how before in the, with Laura, you were talking about what's called splintering, where it's, it's that, that's essentially the term in marketing uh, where you take a piece, a little piece of your overall product or package and you splinter it off into you know either a free lead magnet or you sell it for seven bucks, something cheap to give people a lot of value for the money. So all of your um, sort of cornerstone content, as it's called, all of the key pieces of content that are going to suck people into what you do, they need, they should be keyword, you know, keyword uh, terms that people are searching for. Because otherwise, again, you're not, you're not going to get discovered, period. Uh, um, anything if else? You, Any if you're using a keyword like love, which is viewed and researched a billion times, are you going to get lost in that? You're better off using something like love affirmations or adding something to that? So, so uh, if we if we take a look now, so it's like you go down this rabbit hole. So for, for example, you start out, you type in love, right? And then we're going to see all of the volume come up for uh, searches for love. And the more generic the term, the, usually the longer it takes. So it'll probably take a couple of seconds. So we're going to type in love. And now let's see, uh, love Victor. I don't know what that is, but that's sometimes like if a movie comes out or whatever, you'll see a spike like this. Uh, love is blind cast. So, you know, that's the other thing. There's things called negative keywords, which are, you know, they suck because you could be in a niche where, for example, somebody's uh, headlines were about being stuck. And then when you uh, start doing keyword research around the word, word stuck, a lot of it is like how to get a screw unstuck for, that I drilled into the wall. So there's a lot of time there's these things called negative keywords that you're basically competing against a term that's not in your space, but because you know the, the, the ecosystem of Google is for everyone, uh, you don't want to put yourself at a disadvantage where you're now competing against a completely unrelated industry with tons of money, right? That's one of the things that stinks about uh, running co-space ads on, on uh, Google when I, because when I, our spaces are only for therapists and wellness providers. So if I market co-working spaces, I'm now marketing to this you know whole other audience that I don't want to waste money uh, you know, advertising to, but unfortunately all the therapists who are looking for spaces like this, they're searching for co-working spaces. So it's nice to find a, a niche and a, and a way to phrase your message and what you do where it's not competing against uh, more established industry. So back to my example here, if we look at love, um, there's 6 million searches about love, a lot of love quotes. So I would say you're better off because it's such a vague term. Let's look at the questions people ask about love. And it's really interesting, like doing, just going down this rabbit hole, even do if you don't end up talk. using. I, go, I just Googled do lovebirds talk the other day. Yeah. So what is love? 673,000 people. What lovers do when love takes over. Okay, that's the lyrics for a song. Is love blind? Is love a verb? Uh, when love and hate. So all of these things, you know, that's, that's just with love in the keyword. Now let's look at related keywords, and this is where the rabbit hole starts. So we started with love. We're now going to look at related keywords. So, you know, uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff about dating, which, you know, I don't know what your product is, but like you could do a, you know, little segment on dating and love. You could do stuff about, um, you know, love calculator, right? So there's this right now, we have 370,000 people searching for love calculator. We never would have known that. So guess what I'm going to tell you to do? Create a love calculator on your website. And now, you know, that's a cool thing that you could have conditional, uh, you know, things on your form. And then based on what they type in, you, you, you redirect them to a product or a blog post or whatever, like quizzes and forms and anything that's interactive is, is good because it's something different. And a lot of the time, you know, what's valuable is you want to capture people's information as soon as possible. So a lot of times uh, it's annoying, but it works. It's like an, uh, a, a, a marketer thing, but you'll, you've probably been on websites where you do a quiz and, you know, they'll ask, they'll make you to, they'll ask you to answer like five to 10 questions. You answer the questions and then to hit submit, to see your results, it says, enter your email here. And it's the most annoying thing in the world, but people do it because it works because the users have already taken the time and the emotional investment, right. To fill out the five questions. So, you know, they're just like, screw it. I'll just give them my email, whatever. Uh, so this stuff actually works in, in, in generating leads. I, I'm going to get back to the keyword research in a second, but I want to share another resource that ties into this that will help you create 
unlimited content, unlimited video, you're never going to have like writer's block. From this point forward, you should never have to wonder like what video should I create? Because you're going to be able to see, okay, there's 50,000 people searching a month about this. Let me go make a video on that. And then to spice it up, to make it interesting, um, I'm not gonna take credit for this resource. Digital Marketer is one of the most established, it's where I learned a lot of my stuff like 10 years ago. And they have this master list. It's like blog post ideas. And you can turn this, you can just consider this YouTube uh, uh, ideas. And what they do is they give you every different type of, uh, you know, post that you can. So let's say we have a topic like HPV, right? Um, we can do a rant post about HPV. We can do a, um, a crowdsourced post where you take a lot of different people sharing their experiences. Boom, you put it in once. So this, I'm going to share the link, but this is essentially, you know, what I use to brainstorm what type of content you're going to create. And what's good about using these uh, sort of roadmaps is you want to create, you want to get in a place ultimately where you're like a month or two ahead of your content schedule. Nothing's worse than always feeling, you know, behind. So with, with these techniques combining keyword research with this like, uh, blog post idea list, you have essentially like an automated unlimited way of creating ideas. So for example, to tie it all together, you know, we can go look at the questions people are asking about uh, psychologists. So let's see what the volume is around here. Let's, let's see. So is a psychologist a doctor, right? So 10,000 people a month searching for that on Google. Uh, so what we may do is we may create an answer post that answers that question. We can create, a, you know, I'm sure we can find a, a bunch of these ideas that we can fit into the um, the keywords that are showing up. So I'll send that link after we're done. Uh, let's move on to some of your other niches. So we have Ayurveda. I was actually shocked by how many searches there are around this. Uh, I underestimated it a little bit. So let's take a look. So as far as, did I spell it right? Yeah. Ayurveda. Yes, you did. Okay, so Ayurveda. we're searching. Ayurveda searches. Uh, this is for YouTube. So let's let's move over to Google because there's obviously a lot more. I usually like to start with Google because that best represents just the overall picture. So there's about half a million people a month searching that. There's 75,000 people a month. So the second most search for a term with Ayurveda in it is Ayurvedic medicine. And, that, and then there's massage, diet, treatment. So, you know, if you have a site that is centered around Ayurveda, you're your menu is probably going to be like medicine, massage, diet, treatments. Like it's that simple because that's what people are searching for. Now, if we look at what are some of the related things you think people are searching for around this topic? It's really interesting even just to, you know, mess around with this and see. So I have no idea um, what PETA is. I don't know what VADA is. Yeah, I'm sorry. One of the doshas. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But look, that's, you, now you have the quantified, uh, you know, so if, I don't know about the space. So at first I'm like, and this is why this is important. At first I would think, eh, there's probably not that much search, uh, searches around that shouldn't bother, but because I don't know that space, my assumption is wrong. And now we see where that is. If you have um, a FAQ on your website, look at the questions that people, and the funniest thing about keyword research is you see the, you actually see what people are searching for. And sometimes people search for some really funny or messed up stuff. And like, you actually see the searches. So it's interesting. You, you, see, you get to see what people all around the world are searching for. So you can imagine the things that come up, but here you go. So if you're going to do a, an FAQ on your website around this, boom, here's your FAQ literally written for you. And these are the top searches. And again, you can always sort by trends. Uh, let's search shamanic. So we have some, related keywords for that. So meditation is a big one. You know, for example, in um, on YouTube, guided meditations are huge. I think I, I talked to Laura about this when we we're looking into what type of meditation content she should create. And like guided meditations, if you if your business has anything with guided meditations, I highly suggest making a guided meditation series on YouTube as, as its own series because there is so much search volume uh, around that. 
So, you know, sh if we search shamanic or shaman, then Reiki is one of the first things that come up as well. So as you're starting to build your products, right, within your umbrella of businesses, this, this is a good way to also think about, you know, what products you want to create under your umbrella. Um, any questions? Any requests? Let's open it up to requests because it's, it's, this is the most fun when it's applying to your, um, you know, your business. So are there any searches you guys are curious about that you'd be like insight on? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so Bo, thank you again for your feedback. Um, actually where I'm getting most of my business now are people who are looking for astrology readings and tarot readings. Okay, so let's, we're gonna search astrology reading and then we're going to search tower reading. Maybe uh, something else has higher volume, so we'll see. So people who are searching, let's just start with terms that have the words astrology reading in them, okay? So if we look at that, we have a lot of people searching for astrology reading free, which, uh, you know, that may be a good lead magnet. You may have like a free feed free on your session. website, but... Yeah. Yeah, free for lesson, exactly. So astrology reading Vedic, chart, um, online, a lot of online, a lot of demand for online reading. And that's why you really have to go through the whole list because you know sometimes, like for example, astrology reading free online, astrology reading online, astrology readings online. So when you, you, you basically have to add up all of these and kind of look at them as one. So obviously, you know, a lot of online demand for online readings. But if we look at the overall volume there's not that many people searching for astrology readings. Like there's only 8,000 a month on Google. So let's, this is a good opportunity to see, okay, well, how can we cast a wider net to get people into your astrology readings? And now it starts becoming a little more apparent. So if we look by overall volume, uh, you know, horoscope, which is going to be very hard to compete against. This is where it's, you know, you, you start balancing, do I go for the, the broad terms and how competitive is it? There's a million horoscope sites, so it's going to take you a lot of resources to rank against that. So let's keep going. Um, you know, there is a lot of horoscope stuff, so I would, I, I'm not saying don't do it, but you, you know, you're going to, that's a more longer term strategy. Um, definitely specific signs. So it's interesting to see which signs search for their horoscopes the most. So like a Scorpio tends to search for, or sorry, uh, yes, Scorpios search for their signs the most compared so they they search uh or their 1.2 million right probably and then or their partner i'd say it's probably their partner because they can't figure them out <laughs> yeah probably right <laughs> this stuff is so interesting to me because you start like you just go down this rabbit hole and you learn all this cool shit that you normally wouldn't do and it's really and it helps with your business so it, it's really helpful and it's fun and um again it writes a lot of your headlines and content for you especially the questions. So let's see what kind of questions people are asking around horoscopes. And I'm going to actually go back. Let's see what's trending around horoscope because it's, it's been interesting to me to see what is trending as a result of COVID and everybody staying inside. So there's been a huge surge in Gemini. You know, maybe Geminis are the sign that go crazy when they're uh, uh, contained in their houses and apartments for a few months. And that's why people are searching. I don't know. A big interest in Egyptian astrology really big. So that, that's a good one. For example, I don't know if you incorporate that or even if you don't like creating a blog post, like Egyptian astrology versus what you do, for example, even you can always spin these keywords and make them applicable uh, to you. May, you know, obviously May uh, each month that will be trending Chinese astrology chart. So these are all the things that are, what, what's an astrology house, astrology houses. What is that? Yeah. 12 houses. So each house has a specific meaning. Interesting. It tells you about an area. Yeah, yeah that's, that's trending a lot and that has significant volume. So um, that, let's look at the prepositions people are reading around. Let's just search astrology in general. Because that's the other thing. You know, we search astrology readings. Now we're searching more vague, just astrology. And let's see what comes as a result of this. So as I'm searching for this, uh, who's not, who's up next? What do you want to dig into a little bit? 
Bo, I want to go next because mine is a little bit different after our conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's watch the prepositions. I just have a quick question while that's coming up. And um, I have Vimeo videos embedded in my website. Should I switch that to YouTube? Yeah, so Vimeo is good for like, if you have like a corporate video and you don't want the branding and you just want it you know, to be clean. But what's the biggest difference between Vimeo and YouTube? That you don't have a built-in audience. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity costs of not having things on YouTube just because like the world uses YouTube. That's their number one source for videos. So why would you not potentially uh, get all these eyeballs on your content? You know they're there, you know they're searching for it. So that's really, you know, th there's, a, there's a huge opportunity cost of not being on YouTube, right? Well, I've got them in YouTube and Vimeo, but as far as loading them specifically onto the website, they're loaded from Vimeo. That's fine. That's fine. As long as like, for example, so in your comments on your YouTube videos, you should be linking to your website. So if you do that, it correlates, you know, it correlates the fact that your YouTube channel is pointing to this website. Boom. Uh, and, and I don't know if you have Google Analytics installed. That also you know, helps clarify that. So if we look at, you know, these astrology searches, um, I can, and, and the good thing about doing this is you can actually export, you know, all these lists and create almost like your database, which is actually what I do for my businesses. I have a spreadsheet every, every time I'm bored, I'll do, you know, keyword research for five, 10 minutes. And then I put all my ideas in a spreadsheet so that again, there's never this block of uh, what should I be creating? There's never this content uh, block. It's, it's always just a well-oiled machine that's, that's, uh, spitting out ideas. So who else, who, uh, what was your, um, So we search? had a conversation about, um, going from job to business owner, but I don't know what that, you know, that's a pretty broad discussion. So is it spa business? Is it spa business ownership? Yeah. So, yeah, so just to give them a sort of, uh, overview, you consult spa owners, uh, in that niche, on how to grow their revenue, grow their business. So a lot of what people react to is they want, you know, they want financial freedom, they want uh, independence, but you don't want to be that like, I'll give you financial freedom person because everyone hates those people because they're all full. We do. Right. I mean, yeah. So what you need to do is you need to capitalize. Like, how do you say that in a way that's not going to just put you in that, you know, in that category of people who are selling the stream. And what I know about, you know, the wellness space is that a lot of people who own spot, you know, they think, they think they're entrepreneurs, but they really have a job. They don't have a business. And that's, you know, for me, for example, that's when I started, like, that's, that was one of my biggest realizations in life is realizing what the difference between a business and a job is. In a business, you know, you can take a couple of weeks off, it's still going to make money. Uh, if, if you do that with a job, you, that's not the case. And everybody wants that. Everyone wants to have a business. And there's this whole subset of people who think they're entrepreneurs, who think they have a business, but they really just have a job. So what I was telling you is, as you're teaching, you know, the, this avatar of a spa owner, part of, you know, what you're, you're, you're empowering them to do is take their job and turn it into a business. So what I would do is I would look at everything. I would look, I wouldn't start with the actual financial freedom or turning job into a business searches for your keyword research. I would, because there's a lot of that, you don't want to compete against that. What I would do instead is I would do the long tail strategy. So we're going to look at, you know, if you're opening a spa, and this is where it's important to put your, put yourself in the shoes of your potential user, what are they going to be searching? They're probably searching for like spa business plan, like things like that. That's what they're going to be searching for. Most likely, I could be wrong. You're not going to have as many searches overall. You're not going to have that much volume for this, but that doesn't matter because there's certain niches that don't have a lot of volume, but the margins are huge. So, you know, this could be one of those businesses where you're selling five, $10,000 packages. You don't need millions of people. You just need to capture all of these thousand people a month. And out of them, Hey, you convert 10 people a month. You're good. You're making, you know, 50 K a month. Right? So that's, that's basically how you have to look at this. So for example, thousand people are searching for, spa business plan, business plan for spa. There's about 4,000 people, you know, 
there's a, probably more. There's probably like six, 7,000 people looking for business plan templates, or right? So what you could do is you can offer as your lead magnet a free sort of diagnostic thing that lets them put in their revenue goals, you know, create a form and just create some sort of interactive way for them to spit out a business plan. And it's like, hey, if you want more, schedule a free consultation, click here. So that's, you know, that's just the spot business plan keywords. Now let's look at the related keywords and see what uh, people are actually searching for. So, you know, business plans, that's too vague. Uh, yeah, we're probably this, and this is where, you know, going back to what I said, you have to be careful if you're, if you're in a niche that's competing against other industries, it's better to go the long tail strategy and, you know, let's see, operating spa. And Sheree, I would say just from a business strategy perspective, you know, I would, I would say, okay, I work with spas on their business plan, but is that also applicable to other business models? So would, would you be able to effectively work with chiropractors? Would you be able to effect, effectively work with acupuncturists? You know, so can you take that same business track and apply it to other niches because I think you can do some research within here and see how much searches are happening in these other categories that are relevant to what you offer and possibly have different tracks. So like a wellness location versus just a spot. But I think wellness is too vague. I okay. Mean, I don't know that somebody, if I'm open at chiropractor's office, I'm going to search for chiropractic business. Okay. And then acupuncture. Okay. Perfect example of how you can use this now to develop your business. So you started off by telling me, you know, you're focusing on the spa and wellness niche. Okay, spa owners. But, and I know this from my girlfriend bitching about it for the last two months, she can't find where to get her nails done. Like everything's closed and I'm sure all of you, know, I see a lot of you relating to that. And guess what? It's reflected in the searches. So you have all these people now who are looking for open nail salons near me because they're all closed. We saw that last month, month over month, there's been a 650% increase in people looking for nail salons. So then what's happening? You have all these people now who are like, you know what? I can't get my nails done. This is a good opportunity. I want to open up a nail salon because I can kill it now. There's, this is a huge problem that I can solve. And again, we see a 5,500% increase in people looking to open a nail salon. So now what are we going to do? We're going to go out and we're going to create a landing page that says um, <laughs> nail salon searches are increasing 500% a month. Click here to learn how to open a nail salon and take for a free consultation. You Put know what's hilarious? Show, you know. I'm a nail tech. <laughs> there you go. So, so I guess your new business is you're going to open a nail salon. <laughs> never, but I'll teach somebody else to. I will never do that again. <laughs> I, guarantee, I guarantee you, if you put yourself out there as the person who has all this experience in, in both spa management, uh, operations, etc., the nail tech background, you are the perfect person to capitalize on this trend, right? Holy Look at, I mean, these are crazy <laughs> numbers, 54%. Yeah. Now, if there's, um, if there's round two of this COVID stuff, that's going to keep, you know, and even if it doesn't, there's still a lot of people there until the data tells you otherwise. Look, this is why this is so powerful. We wouldn't have real, you know, we, uh, until you do this, you're just making assumptions. You're just shooting. You're in just the dark. throwing darts and in the dark. This is why, like, I wanted to teach this by just doing it because I knew stuff like this was going to happen when we were going to discover a lot of cool things. It literally happens every time. Uh, you, you go so one last question, so Bo. How, I mean, I, I went and saw it's like $79 a month. Do you, for us, as we're looking at this, do we need it for the whole year? Or, you know, do you do this on a monthly basis? How often do you check these numbers? I, I, I mean, I do this, so I, I'm checking this like once every couple of days. Um, you can, you guys can all split an account if you want. I mean, you can, you can get the cost Yeah, let me down. look in, uh, let me. Let me contact them tomorrow and see if there's a way to set up like a well world TV keyword tool. And then maybe there's just a share of the cost or something. You said, how much is it, Sheree? You said 79 bucks a month. 79 bucks a month was the business. And then there was a pro. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah. The pro but, is a little bit more. So what, what, you know, if, if there's enough interest, we could work like a, a, a 
report or something where you know I, I put together a report for you for less than the monthly thing or whatever you know whatever that whatever you guys want we can work out I just want you to understand the power of this and also it's not as advanced but one of the sort of freebie ways to do this you know how Google auto completes your searches so yeah. if you start searching for something on Google it'll like give you the suggestions so those suggestions are based on keyword volume so if you actually just go on Google and type in you know whatever whatever uh, niche or whatever keyword you want to look up look at the suggestions and generally they're sorted by volume so you're not going to get the trends you're not going to get as much flexibility uh, of the related keywords but it's still a way to you know sort of get 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 a bearing on what is relevant to your space and what people are actually searching for uh, and then if you run if you create a google ads account this is sort of like a workaround as well if you create a google ads account you can use they have a keyword research tool as well built into their ad platform uh, again it doesn't have as much information as this but it's the free way to do like 70 percent of this so google create a google ads account it's free and then in the google ads account click on keyword research uh and it's like hidden in the menu but just google it you'll find it all right any more uh requests hey Bo, this is uh, a joe sure theme uh, can you hear me yep okay awesome um so since i have kind of a different um or i guess uh people aren't really searching for chaos um i don't think um do i need to search for something similar to chaos like stress or overwhelm or burnout yeah. something like that yes yes and and that's why you know when you have a generic term it's hard to bring it's hard to attach that clearly to what you do because when people think chaos there's a lot of things that are associated with that so the reality is that the person, like again, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who would be uh, the right fit for what your product is. They want to be searching as, you know, how do I survive in a world of chaos? They're going to be like, why, you know, they, they're going to have a lot, a lot of questions. They're going to have existential questions. They're going to have anxiety. They're going to have depression. You know, they're going to have the symptoms, and then you really need to target their pain points, and then, then once you do that present your, you know, uh, concept of turn chaos into opportunity or, you know, or however you, you want to spin it. But you can't get too emotionally attached to anything when it comes to like creating content or your headlines, if there's not people searching for it. I, I, you know, just realistically, you will always be fighting an uphill battle if you are not crystal clear with, you know, if the, the tie from your brand to what you do, so what people are searching for isn't isn't there. So I, you can you can make chaos part of your brand design and elements, and you can have like a quote. It could be your slogan, right? You can have chaos be part of your slogan. Turn chaos into opportunity, or creating opportunity from from a chaotic world, or whatever. It could be a slogan, but your headline, you know, just just make sure your content and your positioning is set up for success, and you're setting yourself up in an area that already has a lot of volume, or has has volume trending up like the nail ex nail salon example that we uh, uh, discovered a few minutes ago. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. well, I think we are um, at the end of our class, so I just kind of wanted to first off thank Bo, thank you Bo for um, another great presentation. Yay!